Deputy Roshin Shortall, co-leader of the Social Democrats, please. Thanks, Count Corley. Uh, Taoiseach, yesterday you announced what amounted to an indefinite postponement of the reopening of indoor hospitality. And at this stage, there's no clear plan or no new date for when that sector is going to open. Um, 24, years uh, 24 hours later, there are still many unanswered questions. And Tisha, while I accept it's a challenging situation, you know, the public should be entitled to basic information about the, the background to that shocking announcement that you made yesterday. So I'd, I'd very much appreciate you answering some of uh, these questions. I'm raising these questions now, not just for me or other members of the House, but for the many thousands of people whose livelihoods depend on this hugely important sector, many of whom have not been able to open their doors or return to work in 16 months. Taoiseach, last Monday week, the 21st of June, the CMO announced the Delta variant accounted for 20% of COVID cases reported in the previous week. He said the figures showed, and I quote, a concerning increase in transmission of the Delta variant, end quote. Did he raise these concerns about the proposed reopening of hospitality with anyone in government at that point or at any point this week? Because the government seemed to be briefing that there was likely to be a postponement. So what action has been taken in that regard and when exactly did the CMO uh, alert you to this? The next question is, in the CMO's letter to the Minister for Health published yesterday, he makes reference to uh, the revised NIAC advice that those under 40 should have the option of receiving AstraZeneca and Janssen. But it's unclear if that advice uh, was factored into the modelling. So can you confirm whether the modelling published by NEFIT incorporates the revised vaccination programme? The Tónishtha this, mor this morning uh, was talking about this. Um, and uh, I made the point that um, the government has highlighted the minority of EU countries that operate a COVID pass for indoor services. Do you accept that these countries planned for this system in advance and that the majority facilitate the use of PCR and antigen testing so that they don't discriminate against unvaccinated people who are predominantly younger people? And in that regard, how can you stand over the fact that unvaccinated younger people will be working in bars and restaurants in which they can't sit down for a meal or a drink? The Tonish has said this morning that, this, that retail workers are not vaccinated. That's true, but retail workers are not banned from entering shops. So, uh, Taoiseach, I'm asking you, what work has been done on this? When do you expect to be in a position to have legislation ready for this new plan? Thank you, Deputy. And uh, how long is it likely to take to finalise it? Thank you very much, uh, Taoiseach. Again, um, Deputy, I would say that the Delta variant um, we, has been described as a cloud on the horizon for quite some time. But at, uh, in, in, and in terms of the advice we got, um, in terms of the original dates for July, for example, and the opening up, we were told at that stage uh, we were at a low to medium risk scenario. Now, Delta hadn't quite penetrated here uh, at that stage. But I think everybody knew in the days leading up to this weekend that there was issues arising in terms of reopening because the, the carry-in calls all weekend were bring forward the meetings to get an early decision and not to have hospitality you know, waiting until next Thursday or Friday for a decision by government. Um, and so we brought forward meetings. Um, and um, the, the, the modelling... Uh, on, on, on Monday uh, that we received um, from NEFIT uh, and, and from uh, Mr. Nolan, Philip Nolan's uh, group, in my view, certainly made the decision to pause and delay the reopening of hospitality um, the correct decision. And I would ask you, would you agree with that? Just on, on that modelling alone, um, that, that a decision had to be taken to delay and pause the reopening of hospitality. Um, and um, but the further advices then in terms of, of vaccination, um, I think will be very challenging. Um, and the government's position originally, as you know, uh, was that we didn't, uh, were not of the view, uh, that we, and that was taken in, in late May, uh, that in terms of domestic access to facilities and services, um, that vaccination would be 
a factor in permitting such access. Um, we now have a significant challenge in terms of indoor hospitality. And what Nefer are saying very clearly is that indoor is the area that poses the greatest risk, um, and particularly indoor hospitality. We know that from uh, previous waves of the, of, of the pandemic. So the challenge now, and as we engage with the sector and with the hospitality sector, is to see can we work a way through this uh, to facilitate the reopening of hospitality. Um, and uh, the, the threshold that has been set by NEFID is a very high one uh, that I think will be very challenging in itself uh, in terms of you know, the non-reproducible and the enforceable um, system. But we are committed we, to further examine this and to engage with the industry uh, in, in, in relation to this. Um, and you know, all of those, the, and the, the NEFID letter has been published um, and the, the modelling has been published as well. And I think the significant shock was in the modelling. Um, in terms of the very high numbers that NEFIT um, have indicated uh, could be involved here in terms of um, the Delta variant. Now on the plus side, uh, it's clear to me that the faster we can get people vaccinated, that's the most effective weapon um, against uh, the pandemic and against the Delta um, you, variant you. Um, into the future. Uh, and, the, the, and, and I think the, the decision is up, to be review by NEFIT um, as, as the weeks go by, and particularly following what's happening in the United Kingdom, and I, and I see no important. Time is up, please. Sorry, okay. Deputy Shortall. Yeah, I, I asked you specific questions there, Taoiseach. You haven't answered them. I'm asking you now: How long do you expect it would take to devise a COVID pass uh, from scratch? What's the kind of time scale you have in mind in that regard? And secondly, why is it that you're not engaging with the opposition on this, that you haven't had any briefing since last December? The latest data that's on the department's website dates from April. How can you expect us to work collaboratively in relation to this when you're not including the opposition in and you're not providing the most basic data that we require? So, look, I'm putting it to you, Taoiseach, that action needs to be taken on this quickly. You need to be very clear with the industry about what exactly you're proposing. And you also need to be clear with the public and with the opposition. Um, I'm also asking you, Taoiseach, that uh, consideration would be given to other measures which would help to mitigate the spread of the virus in indoor settings, most particularly the whole issue of ventilation. This has been done in other countries with other measures, Thank you, including Deputy. better mask wearing and so on, uh, reducing numbers. And what Time consideration up, have you been giving to that? Well, you should. well, Deputy, first of all, I think you've just been slightly disingenuous in terms of briefings and so on, because I've had ongoing discussions. When things go well in COVID, you never raise it. You never seek a briefing when things are going well. That's just the rule of thumb. When things go, when challenges emerge, you pile in. That tends to be the we nature of the exchanges on COVID. But leave that to one side. Here. A briefing will be organised. You had a discussion with me not so long ago, and you arranged, you arranged a briefing for me from the Zero COVID group that you were advocating for, and I met them. Like your position all along has been that we shouldn't open into hospitality at all. Like, let's be honest about it. That has been your position. There and you're having it no both ways. Briefing this you're year. having it both ways through the chair no, no in terms of your zero COVID one month and, you and your something that. else the next one. Now, in terms of other measures, I agree with you. I do think we have to look at other measures in terms of hospitality, including testing and including uh, ventilation. And we have been looking and, 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 and recommendations have been made in respect to ventilations of premises um, across the board because that is an important um, issue.